shall Shibalba once more. All right, let's get something out of the way right now. Marlo Briggs and the Mask of Death is a God of War clone. Now, if you're okay with that and you can look beyond that, you might find a surprisingly fun and deep game. What makes Marlo Briggs so interesting, at least at first, is just the fantastic humor in the game. Marlo realizes that his situation's a little bizarre. So he might be taking on wave after wave of enemies and then come to a turret and be like, oh wow, how convenient. Other times he might say, oh wow, uh, what is it? What's going on here? How is it that this whole place is trying to kill me? Referring to a platforming section in which there are giant pistons that are trying to crush him. But Marlo's not alone. He's joined on this quest by a possessed Mayan mask. And this guy, he's the real star of the game. His banter and back and forth with Marlo just, it seriously cracked me up. And I love when you die, he makes fun of you. So like, let's say you make it, I don't know, you miss a jump or something and you fall to your death. The mask will actually be like, oh, did you see some enemies down there? I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Now since this is a God of War clone, it's important that the combat holds up, and in this case, it does. There's very simple combo chains you can put together, you've got magical attacks, grappling moves, and much, much more. You can also find additional weapons as the story progresses, with one looking a heck of a lot like Kratos' Mighty Blades. I also really enjoy the fact that the developers try to keep things fresh. Instead of just having wave after wave after wave of enemies uh, attacking you, you've got platforming sections that will break up all the monotonous feeling of, you know, fighting. But you also have, like, first-person shooting areas with the turrets. There'll be areas uh, where they work sort of like a mini-game. There's one in particular where you're attached to a helicopter and you have to dodge the trees. Just things like that make the game feel much more original than it actually is. There's also the genre mandatory experience system which is used to increase your weapon strength, Marlo's health, magic meter, you know, stuff like that. Now, just by looking at this video, what I'm showing you here should give you an idea that this is a really quality release, and it did have a low budget, so I was very impressed with Marlo's animations. Uh, yeah, some of the cutscenes aren't exactly the most impressive, but for $15, this is, this is a surprisingly very good package. There are a couple of things that should be mentioned that aren't so, so hot. For one, the real-time cutscenes, they're interesting the first time you see them. They're sort of supposed to mimic like the Matrix, where the action is paused and the camera's sweeping and zooming all over the place with different scenes like uh, being shown to you as the camera swoops over, say, like an object that covers the screen for just a second and then you see the rest of the scene. So, like, it looks very cool the first time you see it, but I find they drag on and on and on. And platforming sections, they don't have the same fluid feel as the combat. I found that Marlowe often feels far too heavy compared to how agile he was just a moment ago taking on like 16 enemies. For the most part, I found the camera angles to be really, really good. Fixed camera angles usually don't work so well, um, but here they work really, really well. There are only a few instances where enemies would appear just off screen and that can be a little bit problematic but for the most part they work really 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 well the introduction has got to be mentioned because it's probably the worst part of the game it's very low res and just quite frankly just really poor in quality and it's funny because it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth you're like oh great not another one of these but nothing could be further from the truth. This is actually a really good game. That just stupid introduction really, uh, really ruins it. And speaking of cutscenes, the last little thing I want to say is that there are just too many cutscenes and they break up some of the pacing, which is unfortunate because the rest of the game, the pacing is perfect. Thankfully, you can skip the cutscenes, which I, I think some of you are going to do that. Actually, I think a lot of you are going to do that after you spend around an hour or so with the game. So Marlo Briggs and the Mask of Death might have started off kind of like, eh, with that intro. 
but it very quickly grew on me and I, I was just shocked by how much fun I had with five to six hours of uh, really solid gameplay, really humorous dialogue and witty banter, and just an all around a really fun game. So if you've got $15, the game's available on PC and Xbox 360, and I highly recommend you go check it out. For the full written review, hit up projectcoe.com. Production.